Hey y'all, hope you're doing good today. So I wanted to share some thoughts that have been on my mind this morning and hope that um, it, it's good for you in some way. Um, mostly it gets the wheels turning for you, gives you some things to think about and chew on, marinate on, and um, um, hopefully even winds up producing insights for you, right? That's the ultimate goal. Um, because insights are like um, realizations that you can then apply actions to and then have real good changes in your life. So <laughs> not like real good, but real and good <laughs> changes in your life. So that's the plan. Um, but, and also I, um, I shared a picture on my community tab of um, this old book I found in my grandma's belongings. So I have a couple of boxes of her stuff. So she's taped it and uh, this was coming off. I had to glue it. And, um, but it's, it's Tales from Shakespeare uh, by Lamb. And it's actually by Charles and Mary Lamb. And the cool thing is these stories are um, edited for the use of schools. So I, I haven't compared the stories um, exactly to the originals, but I assume that they are um, just a little bit easier to read and um, probably just whittled down to the essence, um, the meat and potatoes, you might say. So I'm looking forward to sharing that with you all. And uh, there's a few really cool illustrations in here too. Um, it says, with illustrations from plates, right? In the Valpy edition of Shakespeare's plays. So, um, really, really cool. And this book is from 1915. So I'll start by sharing um, Hamlet. That was the first one I read. And then probably the next one will be the one that's listed first, uh, The Tempest. Um, just kind of skimming through. I've never read any of these that I remember. Maybe, maybe in middle school or something like that. I don't know. I would assume that they would um, still have some of these things in, in, uh, the school curriculum. I'm not sure, but, um, I'm pretty good at remembering, uh, stories because stories, um, usually make a lasting impression on me. I may not remember the details, but I will remember, um, the essence, you know? And so, um, I'm looking forward to sharing that with you all. But, um, what was on my mind this morning? Y'all, I am... <laughs> challenging myself to try to get into watercolors and on one hand you might say depending on what your your desired outcome is right that's really the whole of it on one hand it's kind of easy because it's you can literally just wet your whole paper down and then just um, touch your brush and the colors and then touch it to the paper and let the color spread so if you're cool with an abstract painting then it can be relaxing, you know, and really neat to kind of see what's going to happen, you know, because the paint's going to spread out on that wet surface. But if you're trying to create something um, specific, that's where it's hard because you don't have as much control over the paint, right? And so um, to try and allow it to do what it's supposed to do, right? hence the name watercolors, and yet simultaneously control it, that, that to me, that's a huge challenge. And so um, that's what I've been doing. And, and here's what's funny. I had this realization this morning. Late last night, um, I just felt like sitting up and having a late night snack and, um, and trying some more watercolors. So that's what I did. So I'm sitting there in my bed. I got all my paint spread out everywhere and now I have paint in my bed. It's okay. <laughs> but um, I thought I'm just going to create something out of my imagination, which is one of the um, things that I love to do when it comes to art, right? Um, as opposed to like a reference photo, for example. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, I'm going to paint some flowers, you know, and I have this in my mind because um, in real life, in my yard, um, you guys know a time or two I have filmed from my swing, my wooden swing, and then back behind my swing I have some flowers and plants, uh, bushes and stuff planted, right? Mostly wildflowers. Um, but back behind that I have these string lights that are solar powered um, hanging up on the fence. And so um, it's really pretty in the evening, you know, to, to see the, 
the flowers and the plants that I have planted and then see the lights back behind that. So what I did was I created, um, again, I, the best word I know to use in this case is the essence. I created the essence of, um, of this scene and I'll share it with you all. And so what's funny about it is <clears throat> as I was painting, the watercolors, um, look very watercolory, you might say, in the background, right? But when I was going into um, the flowers and um, the moon and, and, and the leaves and all this, I found myself going back to my old way of painting that I'm used to with acrylics. And the way I used to paint was very, um, kind of like in layers and just building up and more of not a careful way of painting but more of like a just a, a fun approach so i would just take my brush and i would just kind of um layer on short strokes and then um i would get like a huge chunk of paint and i would just put that on there too as part of my short strokes and it would build up and it would wind up having this um textured effect and they call it impasto painting. You can even use, some people use a palette knife and just scrape the paint up and put it on the canvas like that and leave it. And it dries, you know, um, flare it up, you know, stick it up off the canvas. So I love this, I love this. I love to look at impasto style paintings and I love to make them. And so um, I found myself <laughs> doing this with my liquid watercolors. So, there's a whole lot more paint than water, in other words, right? Not hardly any water. Um, and I was just building up the effect on on the leaves and the flowers and everything like that. And and I, I like I like the end result. It's kind of like a folksy. Um, it kind of has like a I don't know, just a free spirit and folk art type feel to it, impasto look, um, which I like. Um, I'm very drawn to colorful and happy artwork. I always have been. But the problem is I'm realizing just what a challenge this is going to be for me. And so of course, I'm looking into this. I'm zooming in and doing a deep dive and trying to find the truth within this, right? The fact that we do often resort back to um, old ways and habits. And the message for me here is that if we have been, um, I don't know the right word to say this, mismatched or incompatible with a certain person, be it a spouse or a fr friend, right? who we thought was a friend or a group or a family or whatever organization for a long time and we have I think the word is acclimated to that um, their their outlook on life their way of doing life then it can take a while <laughs> to work that out of you so um, and the other piece is this <clears throat> And this is a realization I've had. I don't think, I think that it can be a trap to go down the road of um, self-improvement or self-help um, or personal growth, you know, how they have those sections in the bookstores. I think it can be a trap sometimes to go down that road. Um, and, and the trap is getting into a mindset of, that it's good to always be striving to improve because life is right now life is in the present moment and i think we can we can talk all we want about humility and accepting our imperfections um but i think that it's not the same as a person who is rigid and doesn't want to learn and grow and un who's unwilling to change and be better. It's not that, that's not what I'm getting at. What I'm getting at is um, finding peace and, and not living a life of striving. 
because because of maybe a, an unconscious or a subconscious belief that you're not okay as you are right now. So, you know, and I see this a lot in um, people who are trying to get into art. They um, will make something really beautiful and yet it won't be exactly like what they intended right or what the materials are intended to do or how they are intended to be used and so what they'll do is they'll compare and because what they have in the moment isn't matching exactly what the goal was then it in their mind it's like a fail it's a total fail and i i don't want to to be that way in my mind and heart and so um the truth is, every single thing we go through in this life is going to affect us. It's going to impact us. It's going to influence us. I think that maybe we are more suggestible in, by nature than what we realize. And um, you have to be careful that as you are learning and growing, which is a good thing, that you're not evaluating yourself to such a, a, a strong degree that you are um, becoming so critical of yourself. I lost what I was gonna say, y'all. It just went. It's like it was flooding so fast. It was like I can't spit it out fast enough. <laughs> so, but um, essentially, that's what that's what I mean. I think that we just have to say, you know, I get that I'm different now. Um, or that I, I am constantly evolving and who I am today is not who I was yesterday, but I may have remnants, you know, from whenever I was involved in or um, whoever I was around. I'm, there may still be remnants within me, but, you know, life is a process of evolving and forever growing and changing. And so, um, resistance, that was the word I was going to say, resistance. So, I just encourage you to try and detect um, any um, essence of resistance within you because that steals your peace. That steals your peace. Um, and uh, not only is it not healthy, literally, for your body, um, but it's also... Um, just steals your joy, you know, and so, and your peace, like I said. So, um, just kind of going with it, just going with it, going with the flow and saying, you know, um, just like I did with this painting, like, well, it doesn't really even look like a watercolor. It looks like an acrylic on paper, you know, but but it's okay. It's okay. I like it. And I had fun. And um, there's a there's a whole philosophy or an approach to art called art for art's sake. And um, I think at, at my heart, that's really the reason that I love it. You know, it's not really for the outcome anyway. It's for the process. It's the process. It's kind of like um, life is a journey not a destination. It's kind of like that. And so, um, yeah, I think that's what I wanted to share. And, um, I just hope that, uh, that's been beneficial for you. I hope that it got the wheels turning for you. Um, and I just thank you so much for coming along to hear the message. I feel like something's wrong because I'm only at 14 minutes. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, how can, how can that be it? But but I think that's it. Yeah. So I'll probably um, share um, this story with you all maybe later today or tomorrow. Um, I don't know yet if I will just be kind of sharing the highlights and talking about it or if I'll be actually reading it. Um, it would be kind of a long reading, but, but it's really good too. So um, if you have an opinion on that, I'd love to hear it in the comments. But... Um, Again, thanks so much. Have a beautiful day, and I will see you again very soon.